Uh, thank you guys so much. I, I love that we started with joy because this is gonna keep us going throughout. Um, but it's my pleasure now to introduce our, our next moderator and our next panel. And before I do that, I should have noted one other thing when we were talking about our program. Oh, it's okay. And that is that this is a program that is spanning the ages of starting in early childhood, um, around age, age two or so, all the way up through middle school. So we have fellows who have expertise across the early childhood and moving into middle childhood and moving into adolescence realm, um, which is actually also a really cool cross-sector moment <laughs> for us, and we need to do more of that. So I am thrilled to inv invite our, um, our next moderator up, um, and then she will introduce the, the panel. Um, and this is Ashti Zahidi. Hi, let me see if I've got the next. Hold on, guys. Let me get, it, get us going. Okay, yes, and she's going to introduce the next video. Um, and Ashti has been a, a mentor, um, an advisor to the program for several years now. She is the CEO and founder of the Global Schools Forum, which is an incredible organization, um, I think based in the UK, but works with schools across the world, primarily in lower income and underserved communities to support those schools' growth. So we were so thrilled to have Ashti as a mentor and an advisor on this program. And I'm gonna turn it over to Ashti now. Thank you. So good to see you. Hi, everybody. Um, can you hear me okay? Thanks, Lisa, for that very kind introduction. Delighted to be here today. Um, after Joy, we are moving into the topic of belonging, which is incredibly dear to my heart. Um, as Lisa said, my name's Ashti, and I am so, so excited to be here with the fabulous team bringing us the Bel Building Belonging Project. Um, but before we jump into a conversation with them, let's watch a quick video that tells their story. It's remarkable how many kids in a number of countries are not turning up to school anymore. The social contract that had existed has been broken in many places, and that is in part the result of COVID, but I think it's also issues that were percolating long before COVID. What science is showing is that kids that have a strong sense of belonging and backing and understanding of self as someone who is a learner and someone who can succeed are the ones who can then win. When we started brainstorming, one of the things all of us resonated on was this detachment of kids from their schools. And at first we thought about giving youth a voice so for quite a while, our project was Project Voice. As time went on, we realized that probably the people that help them express themselves are basically their teachers. So now the project moved to giving their teachers and their, and their parents and their guardians you know, the tools on how to understand how these kids try to express themselves. That's why the name moved from Project Voice to Building Belonging Project. We wanted something that was shareable, usable, doable, replicable. The sort of anchor piece to the project is this 10 minute video, which is a combination of students and experts and teachers talking about why this matters. They get into the neurobiology of why belonging matters. They get into the research on teacher practice and why this matters. Students really talk about how it's impacted them themselves, but we felt the video was a very powerful way to make our case concisely and quickly, and in a way that very time-strapped teachers can digest. And then we've, in addition to that, created resources that we've put on a website that we've created, which is buildingbelonging.org. We created lesson plans that for 5, 15, and 45 minutes, depending on how much time they have. If they were raising awareness and understanding of the science of belonging, then also providing some, some practical tools for teachers to start that work in their classroom straight away. So one of the classroom resources that we've developed is This Sticks to Me. The brilliant Juana Negru within our group, who's our research specialist, managed to take all of that evidence around belonging and affinity and voice and translate that into this uh, lesson plan that teachers can use throughout the day. 
The science beneath our Building Belonging project relies on research focusing first on social belonging and bringing this concept of social belonging closer to school. For people working in the system, sometimes the fact that they offer them very practical tools, they have a smart board, they have their tablets, they have an app that the school uses or whatever, they have Google Classroom where they can interact, these practicalities mean that they offer school belonging. And from my perspective, sometimes the emotional dimension of kids feeling that they belong in school is always last. Moving this space just one centimeter over this line of practical problems to emotional and cognitive problems, I think it's something that we need to look at. The idea of belonging in middle school is for me directly correlated to the future of our systems of democracy and of international relations and of international collaboration because if we want to build a world in which every person can participate and be a part of a democratic culture, every kid in middle school has to feel like they belong and they can develop their voice because otherwise they're not going to grow up into someone who feels like they have power and they have agency and they can shape the future of our world. We hope that library may well uh, grow in, over the next uh, coming years and we can maybe continue to get this message out in as many different ways as, as, as possible and people want to learn about the, the science of belonging and, and there are multiple angles at, at various levels of kind of breadth and depth for, for them to, to, to kind of um, learn more about it. The ability to be able to see this problem from different perspectives has been it's just unlike anything that, that I've that I've had before. It's, it's been a wonderful experience and I'm very confident that we'll stay in very close contact even after the the kind of official end of the summit. incredible piece of work and with that um, let me invite um, the panelists onto the stage to join us for the conversation. We've got Jenny Anderson who's a former New York Times journalist and author who's from the US but based in the UK. John Hutchinson, Director of Training and Development at the REACH Foundation also in the UK. Henry Sampson Mafalul, Executive Director of the Joss Film Initiative in Nigeria. And remotely, we've got Fernanda Rain, who is a founder of the History Collab, based in the US, and Juana Neg Negru, Associate Professor of Psychology from the Babish Boyoi University in Romania. Welcome to all of you, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Ashley. So the Building Belonging Project, um, as we've all seen from the video, makes such an important contribution to what is such a vital topic. Um, for those of us um, that are working in global education, and, and all, of us, all of us working here and in the UK, um, children and young people and our education systems are grappling with a set of very complex challenges and, and a lot of change. Um, so this comes at such a right time. Um, with that, uh, let me turn to you, John. Um, to first get an educator's perspective. You taught in London schools for 10 years and now you are training hundreds and hundreds of teachers. Um, how do you see belonging or the lack of belonging manifest itself in your work? Uh, thank you. So uh, I think I want to start by saying teachers have just this tremendously difficult job. It's always been a very, very hard job to be uh, a teacher and, and no time more so than than right now. And when we think about the learning sciences, teachers are thinking about curriculum, they're thinking about assessment, they're thinking about instruction, there are kind of all of these things. Um, but as our group were, were sort of discussing the potential sort of challenges facing children today and how the learning sciences might help, one thing came up um, from, from all of our experiences, uh, and I'm gonna throw it out open to, to you and, and people watching at home. How many people when they were at school felt like, yeah, this is, this is my place. I really feel like I, I, I fit in and, I, and I, I've, got this thing, I've got this thing cracked. School. Okay, everybody in the room hates you right now. 
<laughs> okay, so the unscientific poll is 1% of people. <laughs> <laughs> um, lots of kids, this is a universal thing. Lots of kids don't feel like they, like they belong in, in, in school. Um, and, and that's especially true as they, as they kind of get older and make that transition from, from elementary to middle or from primary to secondary school. And so teachers are grappling with that. And it felt like that was a first order problem. Before you can get onto pedagogy or curriculum or instruction or any, anything like that, um, you need children to feel like school is a place that they're known and valued and loved and cared about. Um, and so that was our, our starting point. When belonging doesn't go right, we, well, we see what, I, I, know, what this, I know what this is like um, from, from, uh, from working in classrooms from, from primary to secondary for, for the last 10 years. And, and we also have the data to back this up. We have millions of children right now chronically absent. Uh, absent. In the United States here, it's, it's risen from 7 million to 15 million children chronically absent in, in the last six or seven years. This isn't just a, a COVID thing. It was happening before COVID. Um, and those are kids who are turning up, aren't always turning up, like mentally, spiritually. Um, in the worst cases, if you don't create a sense of belonging in school, children find that sense of belonging somewhere, somewhere else. And that can then lead to, to children being vulnerable to, to criminality, to radicalization, and the sort of capture and division that we've been seeing around the world over the last few years. Thanks, John. Thanks for the sobering reality, but also just, and I'm going to come back to this um, and ask you this later, but just the challenges that that puts on teachers as they try and grapple with these multiple issues whilst also needing to teach. Um, but let's shift gears a little bit to Fernanda. I, I want to understand from you how this manifests itself in your work as a social innovator, um, co-creating innovation with your teachers, with families, with communities. Um, how does this impact your work and, and what do you see as you co-design these projects? Well, just to stay on the depressing theme that John started, I mean, we see... <laughs> Joy. 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 We are a joy-free, joy-free project. No, we're sort of in the in the doom and gloom business of looking at how do we solve the problems that we have in this world, right? Democracy going to hell, the planet frying, all these beautiful things that keep us awake at night. Um, and then we turn to young, we we look at the sort of polls and statistics about democracy and young people. And people are shocked and say they're anxious, they're disengaged, and they don't believe in democracy. And oh my gosh, and the usual solution is to throw in more content, right? Kids need to know more. They need to learn more or do more. Um, and we're not focusing in that work on how young people feel or how they're learning and whether the ways that they are learning are building the social emotional skills that they need to thrive as sort of a basis of their getting involved in democracy, which is the, the, the term that my colleague Susan Rivers uses so much, centrality of thriving for democracy, right? So in our work, um, it really is about, it, it's always about putting this thriving and belonging uh, at the very center of everything that we do and how we connect young people into learning environments where they're building relationships with human beings, with their communities, with the world around them. Um, and we see in that that when you build learning that is based in belonging, they end up uh, igniting their curiosity, their creativity, and they become engaged and much more connected with their community. And so belonging really is an essential element, um, particularly in a world where so many kids are also experiencing uh, displacement and migration, right? They're often in environments where they really, really don't just feel like they're in a new classroom, in a new school, but a new country with a new language. Um, and in, in that context, belonging is the very foundation of um, rewiring our school system so that they can be nurturing an engaged and multi-ethnic and multi-perspective uh, carrying democracy uh, for the world that we live in today. Thank you so much, Fernanda. I, I think both you and John really echoed that the sense of belonging is kind of a pre-foundation. It's sort of something that needs to happen before um, or alongside 
the process of teaching and learning. Shifting to you, Anna, but staying virtually, I would love to hear about your research, which, which as I understand it, really focuses on the process of, of self-identity um, and, and thinking more about the cultural context in which you work. Um, how do you see belonging being addressed in the classrooms? Uh, um, this morning, preparing for the summit, I asked my nephew, who's a middle grader, why do, you, why do you go to school? And he answered really quickly, because you make me. So <laughs> belonging matters immensely. But when schools fight for like more basic resources, like access to qualified teachers or very poor school infrastructure, it may matter less. And for educators and even students, in cultures where educational resources are more limited, this need can be overwhelmed by much more basic needs. So school belonging may not even be explicitly understood as a real need. When talking to um, school, school head, headmasters and um, um, leaders of school inspectorates here in uh, Transylvania when preparing for the videos, that we shot here and I explained to them the concept of school belonging. They, it seemed like something so exotic and strange because their uh, priorities were give all kids books, give kids tablets, uh, ensure a warm meal for all kids. So that, that those were the real needs that would make kids belong, feel like they belong in school. So that's why teaching students and teachers about school belonging matters even more in such contexts. And this will be a core dimension of what I will focus next in my research. Thank you so much. That really speaks a lot to my, my own work with Global Schools Forum, because in many of the schools that are part of our community, um, access to, to basic resources are, are absent, uh, books, chairs, tables and so but but that doesn't mean that belonging isn't important it just needs to be addressed in a slightly different way um, so thank you for that shifting now to you Jenny um, you're a journalist and an author and have just finished a book on the engagement crisis in learning um, what did your research for the book reveal about how a sense of belonging contributes to how children learn I mean how compelling is the research um, thank you uh, and thank God the book is over. That was a long and arduous process. So the engagement crisis is um, very real. I don't know, I'll, I'm gonna cite some US stats, but um, I find them fairly staggering. In elementary school, 75% of kids are engaged in their learning. That still means 25% are not, but 75% are. By high school, 75% of kids are disengaged with learning. They don't feel good about learning, they don't wanna put in the effort to learning, and they struggle with it in some way. And I think we've kind of made peace with that, or we've shrugged our shoulders and said it's too hard to deal with. And I do think belonging is a really essential piece to this puzzle. Um, and I think it's because when we think about learning, learning is hard, right? It requires effort. Learning requires a lot of vulnerability, right? Raising your hand, asking a question, I don't understand. Risking the shame of your peers at a time when your peers mean everything to you. I'm lost, I don't understand. So sense of belonging is just fundamental to be able to marshal the resources to actually learn. And the research is rigorous and it's been replicated in multiple contexts and it consistently shows that when kids, when kids sense of belonging is threatened, they underperform their potential, they feel worse about themselves, they feel a sense of hostility to others. They behave worse. So this is really core. So if we can get this piece right, it would make a huge difference. And this is why we, um, wh why we wanted to focus on teachers, because teachers have an incredible capacity through subtle actions. This isn't, you know, reinventing the curriculum or taking on um, assessment. You know, this is really, it's hard. I'm not undermining how hard it is, but it is subtle and doable. And we felt like belonging isn't tweaking at the edges, right? It's the lens through which a learner sees the world, okay? And so if we can get them to see that they belong and they can participate, they will show up and they will do the hard work of learning. Mm -hmm. And, and the, we kind of did the math and we thought, wow, if we could just get, I live in the UK with, um, as well as John, if we could get 1% of teachers in the UK 
right? That's 5,000 teachers. That scales to hundreds of thousands of learners. Like, we could have the impact we want. We wanted big impact. And so we really settled on belonging as kind of the way to do it. Thank you. Um, those, those stats are staggering. Um, moving over to you, Henry, as, as a filmmaker in Nigeria and, and keeping um, the kind of sobering data that, that Jenny just shared in, uh, shared in mind, I know you guys made some very deliberate choices about how you wanted to build this project and the approach for it, um, the website, the tools, the resources, and the videos. And the video, um, which please, if you haven't seen, you absolutely should. It's a 10 minute video. Um, the team can share the link. It's, it's really, really great. But Henry, I'd love to hear from you as a filmmaker. Why was that video in particular um, a cornerstone for this project? Okay. Can you hear me? All right. Um, you know, first of all, I, I believe either you are creating or consuming video, you know, uh, in some ways that's created uh, some sense of, you know, it creates a sense of belonging, right? Because uh, everybody, I mean, these days everybody seems to have a story to share. So that gives you, uh, uh, you know, like some kind of uh, rallying point. And, um, you know, so um, our project, you know, we, we decided to use uh, videos because we, we believe that this is uh, one of the, uh, like John, you know, would say, um, I mean, like you said, sorry, can I quote him? <laughs> John, can he quote you? Yeah, he says something like, uh, it, it is, sorry. It's in many ways the purest and most accessible ways, you know, to express themselves. That's we're talking about the young people now and to tell their own stories, you know, uh, which, which, others, which others can connect with. Um, there is this community of uh, you know, conversations and uh, questions and answers you know, that you know, have come up you know, by these videos that these young people create. You know, and um, sometimes it gives them this sense of uh, identity. It makes them feel like they're part of something. You know? So creating videos, you know, these are some of the reasons why we felt like using videos could attract or could get the attention of these, uh, you know, young stars, you know. So uh, I, I guess, you know, this is one of the major, you know, reasons why we, we decided to use videos. And we could, we could reach as many teachers as possible, you know, using, uh, you know, videos. Thanks so much. Um, back to you, Anna. Um, and rooting ourselves in the importance of, of videos as a tool for connection. Um, was there a specific reason that, that the team sort of decided to focus on this specific age group, um, this, this phase, um, this transition from primary to secondary for this project? Yeah, everything changes at the beginning of middle school developmentally, brand maturation and the increasing importance of peers and friends complicate things even more. You have to learn more in school, deal with many teachers, plus you feel that how your colleagues see you is really important. So this transition is key for how kids view school and how they become part of the school community. And many, many meta-analyses looking at school dropout, various behavioral problems, or generally how well you do in school plays a key moment at the transition from primary to middle school. So that's why tackling school belonging at this cr crossroad can truly support kids and schools in general. Thanks so much. And John, back to you to a theme that you um, flagged up right at the beginning, which is the role of teachers. Um, but we know that teachers are juggling multiple priorities and, and even increasingly so in the last couple of years. So how do you think that this project will be, um, will have an impact given these sort of competing demands that, that teachers have? Yeah, so we've been kind of uh, dreary, but the good news is that we, we have solved it. So... Uh, <laughs> The rest of you can stand Joy up. Joy is back. Okay. <laughs> we did it. We did it about 3.30 a.m. last night. Uh, we, 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 um, teachers are time poor. Teachers are the most time poor people on, on, the, on the planet. Um, however, they're the kind of the key to children feeling this sense of belonging. Uh, Michael Fullen, great uh, Canadian academic and uh, uh, educational reformer, puts it like this. He says, school improvement depends on what teachers think and what they do. It's as simple and it's as complex as that. 
Um, and so we wanted to have those two prongs. We wanted to build understanding, actual real understanding of the science of belonging, because I think teachers instinctively feel like this is a good thing to happen, but don't necessarily understand the, the theory. And we didn't want it to be superficial. But they also need tools, because they need to do something in the classroom. It's not just about reading a book uh, as, as, as a teacher. It's also having tools to be able to use in the classroom. And so on buildingbelonging.org, we have videos with some of the world's experts, short videos, easily consumable, as well as a longer kind of documentary, but also lesson plans and checklists and ideas for teachers to do this, whether they have five minutes in the classroom, whether they have a, a whole lesson to, to focus on this, so they can get started with knowing their children better, making sure their children feel known in the classroom, and building classrooms and communities of belonging. Terrific. Fernanda, over to you then to give us the answers. How do we build a movement um, for building belonging? Where do we go next and how can we galvanize all of the brain power in this room? Um, and if we have a minute, I'd love to also get your thoughts. But over to you first, Fernanda. Once again, the joy is back on that question. <laughs> Um, because it's, this is where the joy comes in of weaving and collaborating and connecting and making friends and finding partners and being like, have you seen my video and going around and, you know, I've, I've a bridge to sell you on a video to watch, um, uh, just to everyone again and again. And this is how you build a movement. You just keep, keep weaving and you keep building and you keep creating. Um, so it grows really through these emergent learning ecosystems that Greg was talking about, right? Where we can be, there are these initiatives all around the world um, to be connecting people together in these regional networks and hubs of people that understand that learning has to happen in ecosystems. They can become the hubs of belonging learning and giving this kind of ingredient into those networks can be tremendously powerful. It can grow with the power of young people, right? We're working with young people right now who are building tools to, it, enhance understanding of, of belonging, um, also building on this learning science and getting young people to also share out uh, with their own voice and movements um, that this kind of knowledge and the tools that are there are, are necessary for them. Um, it's gonna grow through networks of museums and schools and districts that can see how they can play a role in this because it's every single institution can play a role. If a museum understands how it can be a part of building belonging, it can transform its, its uh, practices and pedagogies quite easily. Uh, again, like John is saying, the little tweaks that you can do, it's, it's on the edges, um, but incredibly important. Um, it, and it grows through storytelling and um, people like Jenny writing about it and other journalists picking up this story and amplifying it and writing books and making new videos about it. Um, and and with, a, with funders and policymakers understanding that this is what we have to measure as success in school, right? To say a metric of whether a school is doing a good job is whether the school is actually building belonging. And this is a project we get to already be working on and testing in this next year coming, uh, coming up um, with a belonging barometer uh, together with a bunch of different partners, but to see how can we measure whether belonging is happening in school and then say, ah, what do we need to do to get there? Because see the video, it's so centrally important. So it's gonna take all the different pieces um, that you need to move in the levers around a systems change problem um, to, to get it, to shift, but we have the, the most important ingredient, which is sort of an understanding of why it matters and how to get it done. I love that. Thank you so much. Jenny? I just wanted to build on one quick point. You, As we all know in this room, you treasure what you measure. And so the fact that we're moving towards measuring this is a great first step. Um, we had the sense that belonging was kind of everywhere and nowhere, and we wanted to be the somewhere, a landing page, resources, information, awareness, all of that. So we are that sort of landing page and starting point, and we are hoping that people get behind it, and we want it to be shared far and wide. And that's why it's free and resourceful, and we're looking for partners and anyone who wants to get on board. So come join us, and we'll be joyful, we promise. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much to a fabulous team. Thank you, Ashley.